You, that hardship leaves you. You get renewed in his presence. 
and you get renewed in your mind and you get renewed in your spirit and you get renewed in his word and in his power and as long as you submit yourself to a renewing constantly and I mean by constantly that the Bible said though the outward man perisheth the inward man saith with me is renewed day by day hallelujah and I believe the secret to this whole thing is to find that place of renewal every day I don't care if you have to find it if you have to wake up and find it during the night I don't care if you have to get up and find it before you have your breakfast but if you will submit yourself to the renewing power of the Holy Ghost let me tell you something there's strength for the battle there's strength for a prayer life there's strength to get in the word there's strength to make it to church. There's strength to sing unto the Lord. There's strength to lift your hands. There's strength to magnify Him. Glory to God. And I'll just tell you what, anything other than doing that when we know to do it, to praise Him, worship Him, glorify Him, is just ain't nothing in the world but old rebellion. Amen. Just absolutely refusing to be happy in the house of the Lord because uh, we don't want to yield over to the renewing of the Spirit of God. How many of you, in spite of everything you left at home this morning, in spite of what's in your bank account, in spite of what you feel in your body, how many of you are going to defy every bit of that today and every time you feel the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, yield to that anointing and let a renewal happen in your life. Hallelujah. 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 For have not I promised in my word, saith the Lord, that every one of you who come unto me shall find rest unto your souls. Uh, Yea, I have beckoned unto thee by the Holy Spirit to, to enter that place of rest uh, and to come into that complete and whole anointing. Uh, and yea, this day is no different, saith the Lord, uh, for I surely have a place uh, and a space about me and about my throne in which I call you to come and lay and bow and stand and worship me in that glory and in that anointed place, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, yea, I have a place uh, prepared for thee uh, and yea it is in my presence uh, and it is in my glory saith the Lord uh, so yield thyself over to the refreshing of my anointing uh, yield my, thyself over to the wholeness of my power yield thyself over to the word that I shall bring into thy hearing today and ye shall find rest unto your soul saith the spirit of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Amen. Now you far different from any other level of creation because you've got the Spirit in you. The old animal don't have the Spirit in it. Amen. And the plants out there don't have the Spirit in them. They got the life, but they don't got the Spirit. We got the Spirit. That makes us a step out of all of that. And that means that we've got something that we can yield over to. Ooh, and the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching the inward parts of the belly. Somebody said, what is he searching for? He's searching to spread light on, show you who you are, why you're here, what you're doing here. Can you say amen? And I'll tell you what, all that, uh, all that other stuff, folks, that ain't who you are. That ain't who they are. That ain't who nobody is in God. God has a seed in man. And in that seed lies the destiny of the kingdom. Can you say praise the Lord? And all that has to happen is for that seed to hit good ground. Come on now. Oh yes, and for the Spirit and the Word to come together in it, what's going to happen? They're going to be birthing. They're going to be birthing. And if after they're birthing, what's they're going to be forming? And after there's forming, watch there going to be manifestation of the sons of God. How many believe that the Lord is still looking for that man? He said in Ezekiel, I sought for a man 
Don't you believe that you want to be that man the Lord is seeking for that woman? How many want God to trust you with His deepest secrets? How many want Him to trust you with His full anointing? Well, and I'll tell you, get yourself yielded this morning. There's no telling what will happen in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you this morning. saith the Lord are walking where I've never called them to walk and they shall find themselves a stranger in a foreign land and yea saith the Lord they shall find dissatisfaction and they shall find that their heart is stirred and they shall find that they can't get any rest because the only rest is in my presence and in my glory saith the Lord and yea thou must believe that all who come unto me shall surely find it saith the spirit of the Lord and so I say to thee this day look not upon the obvious yea many have looked on the obvious but the obvious is not what I shall have brought forth saith the Spirit of the Lord. I shall go into the supernatural. I shall cause thee to see in to the unseeable. And I shall cause thee to walk in a faith that is even invisible. And thou shalt believe me for things that there is no evidence of whatsoever. But upon thy believing and upon thy standing upon thy decreeing and declaring and upon thy steadfastness to not be moved by what thou hearest or what thou seest. I shall see Surely establish in thy heart my supernatural faith and you shall see worlds moved and things come together because ye stand firm in the faith and lean upon my own understanding and not upon thy own understanding, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to tell you right now, folks, you get ready to see folks look like a fish out of water. And when they get that way, you stand there and let the Lord do His work. Oh, yes, indeed. There's some folks fixing to flip and flop and flip and flop and flip and flop. And they're going to say, what in the world is going on? How many know it's just the Lord moving? It's just the Lord bringing things where they're supposed to be? I don't know but what some of us in this room aren't getting ready to flip and flop in a few situations because we've been looking the wrong direction. Hallelujah. For many shall look and say that it has to be this way. This is the obvious thing. But the Lord said, yea, and I'm going to flip it around. Right in front of your face, saith the Spirit of God, I'm going to do a flip turn in the situations that you look upon this day. Yea, in a moment's time, I am able to turn that thing completely around, saith the Lord. And yea, it shall not be the obvious. It shall be the opposite of what is the obvious, saith the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know how I just saw this in the Spirit when your children are running they think they've just about got away from you and got their way and you just kind of latch on to one shoulder and spin them right around and they find out what they are going after. They can't go that way no more. They've got, I see the Lord getting ready to put some hands on some shoulders. Amen. And do a flip around. Do a flip around. Do a flip around. Amen. Hallelujah. But how many know for him to do what he's got to do is we're going to have to stay in faith. And we're going to have to stay on the Word. We, we can't do all that wandering around. Like you you got to stay in the faith. you got to stay. When you got a body that's out of sync, the worst thing you can ever do is start examining what's wrong in that body because you're looking for it to be different. 
so if that thing is swole or bruised or broke or come on how many know you got to learn to not eat sometimes you'll have to just look forward not look nowhere else amen because you don't look at what is seen you look at what is unseen because what's not seen is eternal and what is seen is temporal so somebody said, well, what about all these afflictions? Well, get up and shout over them. Because these light afflictions that are but for a moment working for you, come on, say praise the Lord, a far more and exceeding way to glory. Somebody said, I don't want, yeah, but you're praying, ain't you? You're praying like you've never prayed. You're praying like you don't like it, and I don't either, but you're praying like you've never prayed before. Well, glory to God. Somebody said, well, what do they do? Just keep praying. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. The friend got up and said, it's midnight. I ain't getting out of this bed. But because of his importunity. You know what that means? Because he wouldn't quit. He was persistent. And he got what he went after. He didn't get one loaf. He got three loaves. He got one for him and he got one for every guest in his house. Can you say Amen. I can tell you the Lord's fixing to get up and start throwing some kingdom woes around. And you know why he's going to do it? Because of your importunity. Because you refuse to believe it can be any other way than the way the Lord said that it has to be. Can you say amen? I mean sold out and set. I'm not talking about this flighty mess. I'm talking about locked in on it and not going to let go till you see what you're after. Well, glory. Well, glory. Amen. If you're after a blue car, a red one won't do. If you're after a red one, a black one won't do. Come on, somebody. That we're not here to cut a deal. That's We leave that to the old district attorney. Let them cut deals. We're not here to cut deals. We're here to take over. We're here to stand in authority and make a mark. Can you say praise the Lord? How many hear the Lord speaking to you this morning? God bless you. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. 
I don't know anything about this but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You can get the worst report from the doctor, from anywhere, and you can choose to lay that down and say, I don't know anything but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's it. That's all I know. And if He's crucified, and if it really worked, then I don't have to worry about this. Amen. You know, I heard Creflo Dollar say this morning, and it's so true, you cannot have, you cannot have faith for works and things that you really don't believe. You can't have faith for prosperity if you really don't believe in prosperity. Right. You won't experience it. You won't walk in it. And even if we get up here and we say we believe that everyone should come up and give an offering, and you get up and you get your offering because you don't want to be the one person sitting back in your seat not giving one, if you really don't believe it, you could come up here and drop a million dollars in this offering and it do you no good. <laughs> Because you have no faith for it. You don't really believe it. You can only have faith in that which you really believe. You can quit you know, that you can quit all your medicines, but if you don't really believe that Christ was your healer 2,000 years ago, all that's going to happen is you're going to wind up in a hospital somewhere. Because your works are not what produce faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And that's the only way we're going to get it is by hearing Him. And verse 3 says, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. I don't want just a word. If there's no Spirit and there's no power behind it, what is the point in it all? If it does not work here on earth, then what is the point in it? What is the point in teaching prosperity if we all stay poor all the time? Right. What is the point in teaching healing if we all are sick all the time? Right. It becomes a pointless unless we actually have a spirit of power and or a demonstration of the spirit and power. That's why we tell you all the time, head knowledge is not enough. Amen. And I know that there's two camps. There's a camp that's all power but no knowledge. They want the power of God, but they have no idea what the scriptures actually say. Right. And we were in that camp once. You know, I remember telling mom once, I don't know what we were reading. I really don't, because we read the Bible all this time, and it said exactly what we believe, and yet we didn't believe it back then. Right. Yeah. You know, we read things. Um, I was thinking, you know, we read about, Paul said, what you plant in the ground is not what you raise back up. When you plant a seed, it does not come up looking like a seed. Right. It comes up as a whole new creation. And yet we sure enough thought that when we planted those bodies in the ground, we were going to get exactly that same thing coming right, up. Right. Even though the Word said that something different. Yeah. Why? Because we didn't have ears to hear yet. Right. All we had was the traditions of men. Yeah. But we did have power and we did have demonstration. We just didn't know how to make it work all the time. And so it was a hit and miss deal. Because we didn't have the Word to back it up. So it was hit and miss. We knew God could heal, but He might heal or He might not. And we were, work we were willing to roll the dice. And see if he would. But it was hit and miss. You might get your healing, you might not. So, and, and I, but you know what? At least we're willing to roll the dice. Because now there's a whole new group of kingdom people that have a lot of word and a lot of knowledge, but they think none of that's necessary. Well, it's necessary to me. If my baby's sick, it's necessary that someone come and lay their hands on them and raise them up. It's necessary to me. If I have no money in the bank, it's necessary to me that my God pull out a miracle and I not lose my home or lose my car. That is very necessary to me. If I'm having a low day, it is very necessary to me to come in here and to be able to lift my hands and worship and speak in tongues and dance if I want to dance and shout if I want to shout and sometimes dance when I don't want to dance and shout when I don't want to shout and speak in tongues when I don't want to speak in tongues. It's all very necessary to me. Why? Because you need both. You need the Word, you need the wisdom, but you need the Spirit and the demonstration of power. Without it, then you have a bunch of so-called Christians that know the Word, but their lives look nothing different from anybody else's life. And most of them have gone so far now where they don't need church, they don't need prayer, they don't need the Bible, they don't need all these things. They don't need a group of people that can help them and lift them up. When Paul clearly said, I love the message version of it. Don't be like some people that don't want to come together and worship together right. and show love and spread joy. That's what we're here for. Yeah. We're not here to be legalistic. We're here to show you love and joy and bring that into your life and to give you a word. Yeah. 
Amen. When I'm down and I'm having a hard time in my own prayer life getting through, it's very necessary to me that I come here and a prophet speak a word into my life. Amen. I know the Lord's there. I know He hasn't given up on me. But that encouragement, it takes you to another level. That hearing takes you to another level. That hearing keeps you from getting weary in your well-doing. Because it is wearisome to come to church for 20 years and see no change in your life. It is wearisome to hear that the cross took care of it all, and yet you're still carrying around all your burdens trying to take care of it all. That's wearisome. There has to be a demonstration of, power, of spirit and of power. Verse 5 says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Your faith cannot stand in the wisdom of your job, the wisdom of your education, the wisdom of the guy down the street, wisdom of your best friend, the wisdom of your closest relative. Your, your faith cannot stand in their wisdom. They may love you with all their hearts, but if they didn't hear from God, you can't put your faith in another word. You can only put your faith in the word that you heard from God. Well, I don't know how to hear from God. The truth is, the only reason you don't know how to hear from God is you're not spending enough time with Him. Amen. That's the only reason. When you spend time with someone, you know their voice. You know what they sound like. You know what they act like. You know them. Yesterday, we were at the beach, and Alyssa wanted to go down and find some shells. So we started walking in a direction. And I heard kids playing behind me. And then I heard it again. And as soon as I, I, I thought I knew it the first time, and then the second time I said, sure enough, I turned around and Matthew and Gabe had gone in the water and come down closer to where we were. Why did I know their voice? Because that's my son. That's my nephew. I see them. I spend time with them. I didn't have to wonder. I wonder if that's Gabe. I wonder if that's Matthew. As soon as I heard their voice behind me, I knew who it was. Isaiah said, you'll hear a voice behind you. Saying, this is the way walking in it. And you won't have to worry about, was that God, if you're spending every day talking to Him. You'll know His voice. If you're spending time in prayer, you'll know it. You'll absolutely know it. You won't need confirmation from anybody else. You won't wonder, was that me? You will absolutely learn to know the voice of God. Why? Just simply because you spend time with Him. And you'll also know when it's not God. That's why sometimes you can turn on the TV and it says Christian, but you know automatically that didn't come out of God. Right. That's why sometimes you can talk to somebody who wears the label of Christian, but they say something to you and you know that didn't come from God. That's why sometimes even in our own life, in my own life, words come out of my mouth and I know that didn't come from God. Because I know Him. And I know that He wouldn't say that. So I have to go repent and line up my words to what He says. And verse 6 says, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. That word perfect there just means mature. And I don't think there's anybody in this house right this minute that can't claim that they're pretty mature in Christ. We've all been here for a long time. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. We've gone over that many times. If they would have known that the death of Christ was the death of all men, right. they never would have done it. Right. Because religion's goal is to keep you in a box. Yeah. The religion's goal is to keep you in this dying mode. Yeah. But if someone comes along and they've already died your death for you, been resurrected for Hallelujah. you, done it as you, and now you're seated in heavenly places. And it takes all of, not only religion's grip off of you, but Jesus said, you don't even have to worry about the world because I've already overcome the world. Nothing anymore has a grip on you. And they wouldn't have done that. They thought that they were getting rid of the problem, but actually what they did was a solution to the whole thing. Sometimes what happens to you in your life looks really dark and winds up being the solution to the whole thing. Because why? Because people can't get you down. It's not a matter of God is causing bad things to happen to you. It's a matter of that nothing in this world can trump the goodness of God. Yes. So even if somebody comes in and they do something terrible to you, their terribleness cannot outweigh God's goodness on your life. They can't overcome the blessing. And God can do just what he did with Joseph and turn it around, not only for your good, 
but for the good of your family, for the good of a nation, even for the good of a whole heathen nation that didn't even know about God. God said, I'm going to take this situation and absolutely turn it for your good. And it said in verse 9, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And unfortunately, the majority of Christians stop right there. Oh, yeah. And they say, well, I just don't know. I don't know because, you know, you can never know what God's up to. That's right. You just never know. Yeah. What are you going to do about that? Well, I don't know yet. I don't know. Well, it's fine not to know as long as you're seeking to know. Right. Maybe you haven't got all the answers yet. But it's not fine to just stop right here no. and say that eye has not seen and ear has not heard because the Lord promised a day when everything you needed would be written. Yeah. Where? Right. No. In your heart. In your heart. Yeah. That's where it's written. It's yeah. not written out there somewhere. Yeah. It's not written even in this word somewhere. It's already been written in your heart. When you find it in this word and when you hear it in a sermon or when you get it in a prophecy, the reason that it touches your heart so much is because it was already written there. He wrote it in your heart. But verse 10, But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. We're just not going to find it anywhere else. It's spirit or it's nothing. Amen. The spirit is everything. Amen. Matt says people ask if we're Jesus only. We're Jesus everything. everything. We're absolutely Jesus everything. And you can't get it another way. No. How are you going to get your healing? By the spirit. Yeah. How are you going to get prosperity? By the spirit. Yeah. How are you going to get relationships to work right? By the spirit. Yeah. There isn't another way. We can't give you. There is no other glory. Amen. The old glory... God said, and Paul was writing about the old glory, and he said it was glorious and it was administration of death. Yeah. And yet it still had a certain amount of glory just because of the fact that God was there. They experienced a certain amount of glory even though it led to death in the end. Just the fact that God showed up. So how much more, how much greater glory is this new administration of life going to be to us? It's an even greater glory. So you, anything else you substitute for it, is less than. Amen. Anything else you substitute for it is idolatry. Right. Anything other than Christ That's is anti-Christ. Right. Right. See, we make this such a small deal, but it's not a small deal because it may not ruin your salvation, but it can ruin your life here on yeah. earth. Come on. It does not mean God doesn't love you or that when you die you won't go to be in His presence, All but right. it does mean you won't even accomplish the whole That's purpose right. that He sent you here for. Simply because you didn't live a life of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And you'll suffer. Yeah. You'll go through hardships you never had to go through. Yes, you you'll live below the means that you were called That's to live. Right. Right. You'll live under stress. Yes. A weight you were never called to live under. Amen. All simply because you refused to listen to the Spirit. Oh, and we're supposed to be a hearing people. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, yeah. God has given them both. I'm not asking you to somehow work it up on your own or come up with your answers on your own. I'm saying we need to humble ourselves before yeah. the Lord and allow Him to tell us something. Yeah. And when He tells us, believe Him. Yeah. <laughs> believe Him greater, like Matt said. Stop looking out here at the obvious. Anybody can look at the obvious. Anybody can call things that are as though they are. Right. The world does that every day. Yeah. They call things that they see exactly like they see them. If you wonder if they do, you just watch the news. And they go even a little further, and they, if they'd like it to be a little worse, they go ahead and call it a little worse. Too. They like to predict that it's going to even be a little worse than what they see. That it's only going to get worse. And some people in the church, that's all they talk about. It's only going to get worse. Right. You see sin, it's only going to get worse. They, they, they see war, they, if they even hear a rumor of war, they're, they're right on board. Jump on board. Sure. And call for war instead of call for peace. Yeah. Even though it's against everything that wisdom says. I know. But we can't look at the obvious. 
We have to look at the hidden mysteries of God. And they're not hidden from us. That's the whole thing. They're not hidden from you. When you're a son, you are in the house. You're no longer a servant. Only one requirement. That you grow up. That you be mature. Yes. What does maturity do? Maturity says, I'm going to listen to my father. Kids don't listen because they're immature. Right. That's why they don't listen. Right. Because they're immature and they just want it their way. But how many times, and we're all guilty of myself included, we just wanted it our way. Yeah. We're like the old song, I did it my way. I did it my way. I did it my way. And it all blew up in my face, but bless God, I did it my right. way. And it hurt ten other people in my family. But bless God, I did it my way. Because no one was going to tell me what to do. Well, there is someone who should always be able to tell you what to do. In every situation, in everything. I don't care if it's the biggest thing. And it might be super big. What job to take. What house to buy. What car to do. Whether or not to marry someone. All of these things. Are where to live. Where to go to church. They're big things. But he should be able to talk to you in the little things. The little things when you're tired and you don't want to get up and go to church. And you don't want to get up and pray your Bible. Or pray and read your Bible. You don't want to get up and do these things. Well, you don't want to. But did you ask God what he wanted? (laughs) Did you ever stop to ask God what he wanted? Well, I don't want to just forgive this person and move on. But did you ask him what he wanted? I'm not telling you what he's going to say. He might say something totally different than what either one of us are thinking. Sometimes, I've told you before, sometimes he tells you the oddest things to do that don't look like they have anything to do with what's going on. You know, Lord, I need help on my job. So-and-so is coming against me. We'll go put $20 in the offering. What does that have to do with help, with someone helping me on my job? Lord, so-and-so is acting crazy in my family. Well, I want you to go and, and, you know, pray for somebody totally else that has nothing to do with you. Because usually when we're praying about them, we're really just praying about ourselves because they're driving us crazy. (laughs) It's very rare that we're actually praying for their salvation. Usually it's just they're driving us crazy, straighten them up so they'll stop driving us crazy. (laughs) You know? But what does he tell you to do? Because little acts... Little things that he tells you to do. He may just tell you to call that child and tell them that you love them once a week. And it don't look like that would make a hill of beans a difference to some kid acting crazy on drugs, out there doing his own thing, don't even want to talk to you, don't even want to come home. But I'm telling you that that one little act, the Lord can use it to soften their heart. But you have to know what it is he says to do. And you won't know if you don't seek to know. You won't know if you spend no time in the Spirit. A non-spiritual person knows nothing. Hallelujah. They don't. Why? Because the carnal man only knows about the carnal man. They can't know anything about the Spirit. It's not that, it's not because God's mad at you. It's simply because when you read the Word, it tells you that carnality can only know about carnality. And spiritual things can only know about spiritual things. It has nothing to do with you personally, whether you're good or you're bad or you're saved or you're not. The Word just says that the flesh profits nothing. It doesn't matter if you're a saved flesh person or non-saved flesh person. It profits nothing. It won't help you no matter who you are. It won't help you. That's why Jesus never lived by it. He never lived by it. Everywhere he went, he saw something that nobody else could see. Why? Because he was listening to the Spirit. He said, I only say what I hear my Father say, and I only do what I see my Father do. Those are the only things that I hear. They're the only things that I do. I'm not going to say or do something else. That's That's why everything he says has meaning to us, and everything he does is important to us. Because it came straight from the Father. It didn't come out of the flesh side of him. He was 100% man and 100% God, but he fulfilled everything that needed to be fulfilled in the flesh. And if he did it, it was not to be Superman and us to just sit around and wish we could be like that. He did it to show us that we can do it too. And you do it by living a life full of the Spirit. Verse 11 says, For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of the man which is in him? Outside of God, nobody really knows what's going on inside of you but you. Because the truth is, 
You could lie to all of our faces about your secret thoughts. Right. And none of us would know the difference. Right. You could talk a big talk, but on the inside, you could be thinking a lot of things right. and feeling a lot of things that none of us would know. If we've all done that. Yeah. We've all had, and there's nothing wrong with that when you're, you know, when you have to put on your face to go to job, your job or have to put on your face to take care of your kids. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not telling you to give everybody your secret thoughts. But the truth is, no one knows what's going on in you except for you. Yeah. And then it went on to say, even so, the things of God knows no man but the Spirit Amen. of God. Amen. That's why you can't find out about Him any other way. Amen. Even if you go and listen to the most famous preacher on the planet, if the Spirit of God is not revealing something to you, right. you won't know anything when you walk out of there. You can read the very Word of God itself. And if the Spirit of God does not reveal it to you, if He doesn't quicken that Word to you, you read it and it holds no meaning to you. Right. Sometimes you don't even understand it. Or you do understand it, but it doesn't change your life or change your day for that day. Because the Spirit of God didn't quicken it to you. Right. No man can know what's going on in God except God. Amen. So we can't look elsewhere to find our answers. We have to look to the Spirit. Verse 12 said, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. That we may know the things that are freely given to us by God. He is not playing hide and seek with you. He is not holding back from us. There is absolutely nothing that you need to know that He won't tell you. Now sometimes maybe you don't need to know something. Or sometimes maybe you don't want to know something. And I've been there. You don't really pray about it because you don't want to know the answer. Because you know the answer is going to require a change from you. Or you pray and you pray and you pray about it and you get the answer and you think, I don't like that answer. <laughs> because sometimes you pray and you pray and you pray and finally when you hit on the answer you think, I didn't want to hear that answer. Sometimes you get in an argument with someone and the answer is you go back and apologize. And you don't want to hear that answer. You want to hear, but God, they were wrong. You, you, you're supposed to go make them right. And his answer is no. You were wrong. Even if you were just wrong in spirit because of how you handled it, you were wrong. So you go apologize. Sometimes we just need to open up to hear whatever it is he has to say. Because it's freely given to us. Hallelujah. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Yeah. Right. They will not follow another. Follow another. And he said, I am truth. He's yeah. not just about truth. He don't just talk about truth. Yeah. He is the truth. Amen. He's the truth in your life in every single situation. I don't care what the situation is. Man can say all he wants. You can say all you want. And at the end of the day, there's one thing standing that's truth, and that's Christ. Amen. All the way around. No matter what our opinion about it is, no matter what your opinion about it is, no matter what the bank account says, no matter what the bills say, truth is truth. Hallelujah. And it doesn't change for us. <coughs> but it is freely given to us. So that we can stand there and even when there's nothing in the bank and there's no food in the cupboard and we don't know what we're going to do, we can say the truth is he giveth me every day my daily bread and I'm going to stand here and something's going to happen. Because truth can't be changed. It can't be changed by my circumstances. It can't be changed by my fears. It can't be changed by anything else. It is what it is. And if, even if everything from your mind to your knees is trembling... Your spirit man can stand on the truth. Yeah. I'm not telling you you'll never have a fault. Yeah. I'm not telling you that you'll never look and you might want to cry about the situation or you might get upset over the situation. Right. What I'm telling you is like Matt said, do not rebel and stop your worship and stop your praise right. and stop all these things because that's where the truth lies. It doesn't mm -hmm. lie in the crying. Right. Right. Ken Copeland once said, Jesus will sit down and cry with you, but it won't change anything. Right. Right. Yes, he's your comforter. Yes, you can cry to him. But at the end of the day, it ain't going to put money in your bank account. Amen. It is not going to heal your body. All your tears will not do that. No. All of your emotion, all that soulish realm will not do it. That soul has to get over it, move on, and hook up with the spirit man. Hallelujah. And as soon as it hooks up underneath that husband, he's just like Boaz. He says, just lay down and 
I'm going to take care of it. Right. That's why Matt, you know, Matt was just singing that song. You give up and you let Jesus take over. Amen. That is not passive. No. That is a very active thing to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we just, well, yeah, I give up and I throw it on the Lord, but then we go out and we do whatever we want. Oh, yeah. Live how we want, act like we want, and 20 years yeah. later, it still isn't done. Right. Because we threw it on the Lord, but we didn't have, we didn't open our ears to hear what He had to say about it. We just said, oh, God's got this. We didn't get our faith involved. Right. No, giving up and letting Jesus take over does not mean you throw it on Him and you run away. It right. means exactly what we sang in the second song. They that wait upon the Lord. They that get in line with the Lord, yeah. in line what he's, with what He says, speaks what He speaks. Yeah. Abraham and Sarah had to let God take over. They had no choice. They were too old to do it themselves. That's right. The promise they were given of having a son through the loins of Sarah. Now they tried to do it themselves through somebody else. Right. And all they got was an Ishmael. That's, right. That's all that happened. They got an Ishmael. An Ishmael that though was blessed just simply from being part of Abraham. Yet had to be sent away from the promise. Because he just couldn't stay with the promise. In fact, he didn't like the promise. When the promise came along, he made fun of it. Because he couldn't understand it. Why? Because he was a product of the flesh. And flesh only knows flesh. It cannot understand spiritual things. So Abraham and Sarah, they had to let go and let go. They had to roll over on God. But it was not a passive activity. Because God told them, I'm going to change something about you. I'm going to change your name. And so every single time they spoke each other's name, they were speaking the promise. They were calling it forth as though it was, even though it looked like everything in the natural that it could not be. They had a hope that something was going to happen against all hope. The Bible says he believed against all hope. Why? Because all hope was gone in the natural. Every single bit of hope was gone in the natural. And yet he kept believing. And I don't think any of us can even fathom what that would be like to be a 99-year-old woman believing to have a baby. Simply because God told us that He would. Right. Simply because of that. It's a very active thing to do to line yourself up with the Word of God and to start declaring it over your life. It yeah. takes activity out of you. And you will start to act on it as well. Yeah. Not only will your words start to line up, but as your words start to line up, you'll start acting on it. Because what you believe is what you act on. If you are in fear, you'll act on that fear. But if you are in faith, you'll act on that faith. If you believe you can't fail, you'll act on it. You'll step out. If you believe you could fail, you won't. You ever seen a little baby that's never fallen before? Never really been hurt? And what will they do? They'll jump right off of anything. Because they have no fear of it. That's right. Because they've never been told that that's going to hurt me. Especially if they're too young to really even understand when you tell them no. They'll just go jumping right off. One time I came in... I was doing some laundry or something, and I came out, and Gabe wasn't even walking yet. He was crawling, maybe holding on to things a little bit. And he had found a dining room chair that was pulled out, and he had climbed up onto the chair and up onto the table, and he was just looking over the edge of the table, wondering what to do next. He had no fear of it. Why? He had no, he had no, no reason to fear it. When you're in faith and you have no fear about something, you'll act on it. If you fear that you really could possibly not have the rent paid at the end of the month, it will affect you. It will affect your giving. It will affect everything that you do because you really do believe that possibly it may not be there when I need it. But if you believe that there's no way, there's no way, I don't care if the whole economy fell apart tomorrow, that my Lord would let me go without having a roof over my head and take care of me, then you won't care if the Lord says, give up and give everything you got. You'll give up and you'll give everything you got. Hallelujah. Because you really believe it. When you really believe it, you act on it. Once it becomes so real in your heart, once the Spirit awakens it within you, you'll act on it. Once you really believe that there's just no way that all of my children won't be blessed of the Lord, taught of the Lord, Amen. And that their peace will be absolutely great. You'll sleep well at night. Yes, Lord. Because you'll know nothing can take them out. I don't care if they're in the worst hell that they've ever been in. The Lord's right there with them. Because he told David, that, or David said, if I make my bed in hell, yeah. he's right there with me. Amen. 
So you'll go to sleep at night knowing they couldn't do anything that they could lose your love, God. They couldn't do anything that you wouldn't protect them. Hallelujah. You promised me that I was going to see them, yeah. that I was going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. I'm not here because it's just a tradition to me, even though my grandfather pastored this church and all of those things. I'm here because I really believe what the Lord has said about this church. Hey. I really believe that we are to, as Matt said, just I don't remember if it was last Sunday or Wednesday, but he said, you know, we're called to lay a foundation. Yeah. Yeah. We're called here to be a repairer of the breach. Amen. We're called here to bless our city, to bless our church, to bless our community, that all around us everything would be built up simply because somebody got a hold of the kingdom of God Hallelujah. in that area. When you come, become so convinced of it, you become like Jesus and Paul. You can be just one man that believes it, walking around, and people literally tremble at your presence. Amen. You know why they killed Jesus? Because they were scared of him. They were scared of him because he was so full of the kingdom, he was changing lives everywhere he went. They persecuted Paul because they were scared of him. Because everywhere he went, he had a power that they didn't have. Everywhere he went, he, he, he would tell them, you know, I, I'm so convinced of the call of God in my life that your threats don't bother me, None of this bothers me. I don't care if the Jews like me. I don't even really care if the church likes me because they really didn't like what he was doing either. Right. To go out there and get all those Gentiles saved. That went against the grain of what was going on in Jerusalem. But he said, I don't care. I have a call and I'm going out to do it. Oh, and I'm telling you, some people don't like us because they're scared of us. Oh, yeah. I believe they're scared because they know the foundation of faith that we were yeah. given. And then on top of that, to be able to stand up and say, not only do we have that foundation of faith, but we no longer believe it's hit and miss, but we believe that every single time yeah. in the kingdom of God, every yeah. single person yeah. that we come yeah. in contact with, we can change their lives. Hallelujah. That everywhere we go, every place the sole of our foot trots belongs to us. Barto doesn't belong to itself. It belongs to us simply because we're here. Amen. Your job doesn't belong to itself. It belongs to you simply because you're there. And as long as you're there, it has no right to be anything but blessed. Glory to God. Your household belongs to you. I don't care if you're living with 12 sinners. It belongs to you yeah. simply because you're there. Yeah. And if you're there, you have the right to change the whole situation in that household. They can all act crazy all they want when they're out there, but when they cross the threshold of your household, they can all straighten up and fall into line simply because you're there. Yeah. We have power and we have authority. Yeah. Why do we have it? Because we've heard something and we've seen something. Yeah. If you don't hear it and you don't see it, the Bible says, how will they know if Amen. someone doesn't come and tell them? Amen. They won't ever know. Amen. If people don't get busy on Mount Zion proclaiming some good yeah. news, how will they want to know any good news? They won't know it. And our job here in this church is to hear something and to see something. And we're not going to hear it and see it. I don't have a problem with television. I don't have a problem with going and having fun out with your family. But you're not going to hear it and see it if you never make time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I want to encourage you this morning. All the rest of this year, you have every right to hear something and see something. Yeah. And it's going to be given to you freely, just like the Word just said. All you have to do is just listen. Get in the Holy Ghost and listen. God bless you this morning.